Hey guys, it's time for another video on Veeam Backup. I've been using Veeam for many years now and it works really well. It has a good balance of features and a streamlined interface. The only feature that I'm missing at this point is the iSCSI target support from the recovery media. After several days of experimenting with the Microsoft ADK, I was able to add this missing feature. In this video, I will show you how to generate and modify the Veeam recovery media to include iSCSI support. Next, we need to download some software. I will be downloading 7-zip, the 64-bit version. If you already have it installed, you do not need to reinstall it. Next, we need to download Veeam Backup. If you don't have an account, you'll need to create an account in order to download. Run the installation file and accept all the defaults. Once Veeam finishes installing, insert a USB key to create the recovery media. Okay, almost there guys, just a few more seconds and we'll get to the good stuff. Alright, the next part is a little tricky, so don't skip ahead too much, uh, otherwise you won't be able to recreate this setup. Right, we need to download the uh, Windows 80K, but it's a little tricky because we don't know which version of the 80K we need to install. And for this, we have to check what version the boot.wim file was created with. All right, let's open up a, a Windows command prompt interface, uh, select run as administrator. And let's check if the uh, dism command is available. If it's not, install any version of the ADK and come back to this part again. Let's create a folder on the C drive called uh, work area and we will copy the boot.wim file from the USB key located in the sources root folder. Now that we have the boot.wim file copied to our work area folder, we can perform another dism command to see what version this boot.wim file is. And we can see that our boot.wim file is version 18362. And our next step is to go to a website that keeps track of these version numbers and associates them with the correct ADK. We can see here that the uh, 18362 matches up with the uh, Windows 10 version 1903 ADK. Now, the uh, version is not exactly the same. The website lists here as 10.1.18362, and our version is 10.0.18362. But I believe the uh, guys maintaining this version history actually just made a little typo here. So it's where it shows the uh, 10.1, it should actually be 10.0. Now that we know which file we need to download, we can head over to uh, Microsoft's ADK download section. Click on the file to download and install. And we will change the default installation folder to C ADK, just to make things clearer. The only sections that we need is actually the deployment tools. All the other options we could uncheck. Once the ADK has finished installing, we will need to go back to the ADK download section and download the optional Windows PE installation file. This will take a few more minutes, but it's the last download we have to perform. Now that we have all the necessary files downloaded, we can begin working with the boot.wim file. We will need to create a mount folder, and this is basically where our boot.wim file will be uncompressed. All right, this next command is rather long, so be careful. Issue the following dism command. Uh, make sure to get the name portion correct. And if you've entered everything correctly, uh, it should say the operation completed successfully. 
Next, we need to copy the WinPE storage WMI file to the work area folder and issue another DISM command. Again, if you have typed everything correctly, it should say operation completed successfully. Next, we need to copy four files that are responsible for the iSCSI initiator application. We are almost finished, we just need to issue one more DISM command to update the boot.wim file with the contents in the mount folder. And again, it should say completed successfully if everything completed as expected. Unfortunately, we have a slight error. I have included this because it seems to come up often, but it's harmless. We can use 7-zip to verify the contents of our boot.wim file. If the new mount folder files have been included in the archive, we can safely dismount the mount folder with another dism command using the discard option. We can now replace the original boot.wim file located on the USB key with our updated copy from the work area folder. And that's all we need to do to modify the recovery media to support iSCSI. In order to test our recovery media, I will create a new iSCSI target on this Western Digital My Cloud. I will now connect to the iSCSI target by specifying the IP address and providing my credentials. I will create a full backup using the new iSCSI target as the destination. Even though I created the iSCSI target, Windows doesn't automatically start using it until we format and assign a drive letter. Since our backup completed successfully, I will uninstall some applications and if our bare metal restore works, we should be able to see the applications return after the restore. We have successfully booted from our modified USB recovery media. I will now drop to the command prompt and start the iSCSI initiator. I will begin the restore process by selecting our backup from the iSCSI target drive. Our restore has completed successfully. I will restart the system and check the status of our applications.
everything looks good. All our applications are there. And that concludes the end of this video. And thanks for watching.